from me. And they try to buy your pretty heart, but price too high. Baby, you can't get like Apple. Your love will not fall apart. So you can put me again and throw me against the talking about how she felt like she was untreated unfairly. She felt like, you know, uh, that Bravo and all of Bravo's uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta, the clear people, uh, they got a pass, right? Whereas she was held to a different standard. Then she goes on to talk about how she, even Kim was her friend, we know, Kim is uh, a European. She talked about how, you know, Kim was able to get uh, a spin on 12 episodes. They reduced her down to six, six uh, episodes when she was the original creator of the show. She brought the show to the idea and the creation to Bravo. But uh, let's just see what Nina is saying. And directly to Andy and directly to all the executives. I just talked to them directly, email them directly, call their phones directly. Today they have grown so big that people aren't talking to them directly. You're talking to someone else to get to them and that kind of thing. All I ever wanted on this show was to be treated fairly. And a lot of girls and the people that work on the show and behind the scenes know that there was things that just were not fair at all. And it pains me and hurts me deeply how I fought for some of the girls that are on the show and how they did not fight for me to stay on the show and how much I fought for them to stay on the show. That's very painful. And who, um, who exactly? The cast, period. Okay. Like all of these girls know that there was unfair treatment because we all have been in group text messages where all of these girls have texts and said that they were feeling unfair treatment. They didn't get fair treatment. Um, there's no secret. I have the text messages. They have the text messages. We've all been in group text messages for a very long time since we've been on the show, right? So I know the complaints. Uh, there's been times when we have complained that we all sat with the executives to talk about, you know, things that we felt that were not fair. And um, I just felt like I wasn't getting fair treatment. And I feel like I should have been treated differently. And I should have been, I should have been giving better, fair treatment. That's it. Yes. And I want you to know that I have always, from day one, been very open to sitting down and having a conversation to figure out how to work anything out, how to move forward, how to just anything that we could do to just move forward. I've always been very open to that. Um, I can't say that the other side has been that way, but I have always been open. So I see a lot of people commenting and saying things like, you know, why y'all can't work it out? Or why can't y'all do this? I've always been open to working it out. I've always, you know, people say, well, maybe Nene didn't want to do that. That's not true. I've always been open to working it out. I've always been open to having a conversation. They have never wanted to have a conversation or they've never wanted to move forward in any kind of way. Is what led to it was that you were negotiating to mm -hmm. come back season 13, if I'm not mistaken, yes. uh, maybe that. Mm -hmm. And allegedly you were offered a limited role to come back, a, a, a maximum of six episodes That's right. out of what we now know to be 20 something. Mm -hmm. um, and was that the start of you realizing that, okay, I'm not getting the treatment that I deserve as an OG, as the person who gives so much to the show that you have these other girls who don't give y'all nothing and they get a 14 episode guarantee minimally. Um, and here I am 
getting six. Mm-hmm. Was that the moment you realized something had to be done? No. Um, I realized a long time ago. Okay. And I think that I'm not sure if they realized that I realized <laughs> that I wasn't getting fair treatment. I knew it long time ago. I have been watching it for so freaking long. And as time went on, my episode episodes, I'm sorry, got less and less and less and less. It was like a phase out, you know. Oh, you started out with 20 or 18 and you went to 16, and you went to 15, and you went to 12, and you went to 10. Y'all notice that's how they work when they're trying to force you out. Y'all notice when we were watching Love and Mary Tunsfield, that's what's going on with, with Melody. And, and, and we can say that Nene was one was the first one to pitch this show like Melody was. But we see Melody get less time. And what they do is, like she said, they start fading you out. Now, and, and even with the mom, Miss Miss uh, Van, she just been completely faded out. So let's just go on and see how low down and dirty they, they play. Eight, six. And I'm thinking, you guys are offering me six episodes. Like, no, no, this has nothing to do with I'm Nene Leaks and I started from the beginning. It was just like, why am I being offered? six episodes like explain that to me and the only explanation that i could get was that you're unhappy so in my mind you gonna tell me i'm unhappy how can you tell me that i'm unhappy i'm not unhappy what do you mean i just get six episodes because you think that i'm unhappy why am i unhappy i'm unhappy that i got six episodes i mean shouldn't i get more than six episodes like why is it a fake so now you guys know a lot of you saying that she got the big head. She thought she was more than than that. But the fact is she's saying that they started treating her unfairly and they started phasing her out. The fact is she said she kept quiet a long time because she knew that others was been treated differently. The clear people was treated differently than she, but she still kept quiet. You guys need to understand the dynamic of what racial discrimination means. This lady right here was a target. And let's just keep on saying, I hate for y'all to keep saying that she had the big head. She thought she was all that. Know your worth. Know your worth. You guys was okay as long as she wasn't speaking out about her work and why they're treating her this way. Y'all, y'all was okay with it. Soon as she started speaking out about what she felt was untra- unfair treatment to herself, then it became a problem. When there's other girls who are not the same complexion as me and started as an original housewife, why are they being offered 18 episodes and I being offered six episodes? What did I do? Because I don't know anything that I've done ever on this show that no other housewife in this franchise have not done. I've not done anything that no one else has done. There's been physical altercations on all of these shows, and I've not been involved in any physical altercation, right? There are so many times when people say things to me like, you pulled Kim wig. I said, you got it very mixed up. I never pulled Kim's wig. That was Sheree that pulled Kim's wig, okay? Be clear about who pulled it. I was standing there, right? And then people say, you got into a fight with Kim. Where is the fight? Did you see it? Where is it? Was it on camera? Where is the fight? You didn't see me in a fight anywhere, anytime, ever on this show, right? So you have girls on other franchises pulling each other's hair, busting glasses. You know, they say, well, you left the reunion. Well, what reunion have you seen that a housewife didn't get up and walk off the show or walk off a reunion? So I would like to know what it is that I did that someone else did not do. These girls have done way worse than I could ever have done. And then you go to, oh, well, you uh, pushed the cameraman. Well, so he was in the way. (laughs) Okay. Now what else is going on? So Teresa pushed Andy down at the reunion when he tried to stand up. So what else are you talking about? So there's nothing that I've ever done that no other housewife haven't done, if not worse. So I didn't, I, I understood why I was being given less and less and less, but I wanted to understand from their side, mm-hmm. why? What did I do? 
you, you can't tell me it's because, you know, you make too much money, you know, when you got these other girls who are making more money, you know, what is it that I was doing? I saw what it was and I had been watching it for a very long time. And I, I, again, all I asked for was fair treatment. That's it. Bethany Frankel is a very outspoken housewife. Yes, I spoke to her recently as well. Oh, what was that about? Go ahead. She's given an example of how a queer person uh, uh, in the same franchise could say and do what they want to do, yet they don't have to be held accountable. Here's Nene. She's talking about Bethany. Long time. And uh, all, again, all I asked for was fair treatment. That's it. Bethany Frankel is a very outspoken housewife. Yes, I spoke to her recently as well. Oh, what's that about? Go ahead. What's oh. your question? Bethany Frankel mm -hmm. has been very outspoken yes. about housewives mm -hmm. in a very negative light. You think so? Oh, yeah. I think she speaks out and says things, but I also think she teeters a little bit around, like I think she knows what to say and what not to say. Well, yeah. What's interesting to me is because I do list her podcast. She talks about how much money the girls make. She talks mm -hmm. about how, you know, these the, the housewives show now is a bunch of women fighting. I won't go back. Um, um, they, they have this book. They asked me to be interviewed for, and I'm like, I'm not going to be a part of a book that talks about women this way. Like, she's mm -hmm. she speaks about a very negative light, but she also gets invited to watch what happens live. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there's a different treatment between you and Bethany. At the end of the day, you both are outspoken women. Yeah, there's a very big difference. First of all, you just said that she gets to get invited to watch what happens live. I am the only housewife that has been on housewife on watch what happens live. I'm I'm sorry, I've been on watch what happens live more than any housewife. Certainly, when he first launched the show, they used me and used me and used me to sit there over and over and over and over and over and over again to help lunch watch what happens live and make it a success and the success that it is today. Because I personally do not think that watch what happens live will be successful without the real Housewives franchise. Period. I don't think that Andy would have any of his success without the real Housewives franchises period because that is where he's known from it's the real housewives franchise and uh, i also think that bethany can speak and say things that i can't speak out and say um i can say some of the same things that bethany is saying right now and i would get criticized or i would not be invited here or invited there and i certainly wouldn't be able to hang out with anybody in the hamptons i think she can say whatever she wants to say and it's okay I just am not in that position. I can't say whatever. And she will still work. And um, I think if we speak and say some of the same things that she said, we can no longer work. Uh, opportunities are being taken away. Uh, you can't, you're not invited here. We don't like her. We don't want to work anything out with her. I don't get that same opportunity. You made some allegations about him, Zosia. Um First of all, where Kim Zosiak is concerned, I think all of the girls on the show all have felt some kind of way, including production, about Kim Zosiak. Now, that is not a secret. Uh, and I have the text messages to prove it. Uh, we have sat in meetings to discuss Kim Zosiak being able to do things that we're not able to do i.e. take a trip together. <laughs> None of us want to take those trips together because we know those trips are intense and we know that you're going to be confronted and there's going to be some sort of confrontation. But for whatever reason, Kim was never had to take any of those trips. We all had children. We had to leave our children behind. She never had to do that. She could skip the trips and stay home. And we would have to be the ones out on the And she still got her check. And we still had to be on that show, on that trip, having confrontations, making sure this show was a success and Kim would show up when she was ready to show up. And that is just the truth of the matter. If Andy Cohen is watching right now, what is it that you would like to say to him? Um, hi, I heard you had two babies now. Congratulations, you have a girl. <laughs> That's amazing. I always knew you wanted to be a parent, buttercup. Um, I don't have any hard feelings. Um, you know, at one point, you know, I'm a Sagittarius, so at some point, you know, I may be mad with you, but then I get over it. I'm not the kind of girl that 
carries a grudge or hold the grudge forever. I'm also not an ass kisser. Again, I'm such a so I don't generally kiss ass and I will not kiss ass. Um, I would just say that uh, I, I hate that we're in this place. Uh, I really wish it was a way for us to find our way back to each other because, you know, life is short and you just don't want to carry ill feelings for the rest of your life. You don't have to work together. You don't have to do anything, but it would be nice to either just to just work through the issues. There's been so many people with greater issues in friendships and they work through them. Uh, as I said to you earlier, Cynthia and I will never be best friends again, but we have talked and we work through whatever issues we have. So when we see each other, we can laugh, we can talk and we can sit at the table together. We can work together. I think uh, it says a lot about a person when they can't just say, let's just move on. Let's just, we'll work through that moment and let's just move on because I honestly don't have any ill feelings. Uh, what happened has happened. Is the end result of this, I know you can't speak much on it, we'll move on, but is the end result of this lawsuit would you like to go back on the Atlanta Housewives? Um, I can't say that I personally would just like to go back on the Atlanta Housewives. However, the fans have all asked for me. And the fans are the reason for the ratings. They're the reason for the show being as popular as it is. And uh, if I had to go back, it would be 100% for the fans. Okay. Not the chat. <laughs> Well, what do you think about their offer? I think you can never have too many zeros. Look at the skin, baby. She is glowing. She is one of one. With new Olay Hyaluronic Body Wash, 95% of women have visibly better skin. My skin is so much more moisturized. See the difference with Olay. Oh, the check is not a bad check. Although I think my check should be bigger. Uh, the check is not a bad check. <laughs> do you watch the show now? I do not watch the show. However, I have watched a lot of the clips that come down social media. I don't even know how to turn my TV on. I think everybody that knows me, including Andy Cohen, knows this about me. I don't watch TV. What do you think about the clips you've seen online? Um, I thought the clips online, well, they weren't, you know, that entertaining. Um, I've had the opportunity to meet a lot of the girls that are on the show currently. And um, just meeting them in person, they weren't entertaining or they were not like, uh, I just don't see any stars on the show. If I So we have Kenya, Candy, Sheree, Sonya, Drew, and Marlo. Out of those six women, do you see any stars in them? I do not. Okay. How do you feel about Marlo getting a peach? Um, you know, from what I've heard and from what I've seen, Marlo is the one that's bringing the most entertainment on the show. Now, we really have a problem. So if Marlo is the biggest entertainer on the show, they have got to do something. Why is that? No, not that she's not entertaining. Mm -hmm. It's just shocking that this has been the person that was a friend to the show for many years. And now she is bringing the most entertainment. That says a lot about those girls who've been holding those peaches for years. They need to take away their peaches and let them become the friend then. Because if she's being the most entertaining person on the show, that's crazy. Some of those girls have been on the show. Let me open the door. That, that, that they are paying some of the other people probably way more than they're paying Marlo. And Marlo is the most entertaining. Then they need to give Marlo some of these other people's check. And some of them need to, you know, take a back seat. Does Marlo deserve to have a peach? Um, you know, I think so now, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have said that Marlo is the reason why you don't get a friend of a peach. They feel That's like Marlo, why you don't do what? People have said that Marlo is the reason why you don't give a friend of a peach. Okay. They feel like Marlo was best served as a friend of to the show. Pop in, pop out, and goodbye. Um, a lot of people can't stomach um, Marlo being full time. Is the facts of who was in America, Africans in American before Columbus. 
could have served as a suitable restocking station for sailors, reducing the distance of the journey to South America to about 2,000 This is Black Culture Diary. While it may seem unlikely or far-fetched to imagine African explorers crossing the vast Atlantic in ships, it is important to recognize that ancient African boats, including dugout canoes, were capable of such voyages. These boats did not require rudders or sails and could have crossed the ocean in a matter of weeks. Prevailing wind patterns and ocean currents that blow from Africa to South America played a significant role in making these voyages possible. It is worth noting that these same winds and currents were later utilized by Europeans during the transatlantic slave trade to ship enslaved Africans. Africans were skilled shipbuilders, as evidenced by archaeological findings. For example, a painting derived from Nubian pottery dating back to 3000 BCE shows a long hulled boat, papyrus raft, or dugout canoe. Another painting from Chad, dating back to 3500 BCE, depicts a bird's eye view of a Nile River boat. All this suggests how skilled Africans were in building ships powerful enough to take them to distant lands. These pieces of evidence challenge the traditional narrative and point to the possibility of Africans exploring and reaching the Americas before Columbus. It is essential to delve deeper into this history and examine the complex interactions between different cultures and peoples throughout time. The Africans from Guinea had skillfully crafted dugout canoes made from the strong gaganton trees found in the Congo forest. Portuguese explorers, like Captain Pacheco Pereira, discovered these impressive canoes, some of which could carry up to 80 men. It's worth noting that similar types of vessels used by Polynesians to sail to the Americas are not questioned for their seaworthiness. Even though some people doubt that Africans have- And as an <laughs> this has a multi-zone support. A 15th century Portuguese painting depicting sailing canoes in the Congo River proves otherwise. This challenges the notion that Africans couldn't have made it to the New World. Furthermore, the recent discovery of American narcotics in Egyptian mummies has astounded historians. Compounds such as South American cocaine and nicotine found in these mummies suggest that the transatlantic trade had brought these substances to Africa potentially thousands of years before Columbus arrived. This really is striking and irrefutable evidence. To further support the argument, the Olmecs, a civilization that predates other advanced civilizations in the Americas, were uncovered by archaeologists in the early 1870s. They are well known for their carved stone heads found in central Mexico, which bear a distinctly African appearance. These colossal statues, ranging from 30 to 40 tons in weight and up to 11 feet in height, depict helmeted black men with African facial features, such as broad noses, full lips, and Ethiopian-style braided hair. These statues are believed to represent priest kings who governed vast territories in Mesoamerica during the Olmec period. Historian Floyd Hayes questions why these ancient Olmec artists would accurately depict African features if Africans were not present in the Americas before Columbus. It defies logic and artistic experience to suggest that they could depict such details of African physiognomy without ever having seen it before. Interestingly, despite this glaring evidence, European archaeologists in Mexico have attributed the Olmec statues to various explanations, including giant babies, monkeys, and even aliens, anything but acknowledging their African origins. These pieces of evidence challenge the narrow narratives that have excluded Africans from early exploration and civilizations in the Americas. It is important to examine the historical record with an open mind and consider the possibilities that go beyond conventional assumptions. Unfortunately, this information remains largely unknown to the general public. For years, the suppression of alternative historical narratives has silenced researchers who bring forth evidence that contradicts the accepted history. What do you think? Why historians glorified Christopher Columbus and attributed him to America's discovery? Isn't it logical to decide he wasn't the first man to discover America? Let us know your opinion on this. Isn't it possible that many more discoveries might originally belong? So you're watching Black Culture Diary. It's important to know that Christopher Columbus did not discover America. I remember, I think I was in it about the sixth or seventh grade when I kept asking my instructor, how did he discover America if people was greeting him on the boat, you guys? He wrote in his diary that uh, uh, 
dark skinned people greeting him with nappy hair that looks like his guide. His guide was a black man. So, uh, yeah, we were here. We were, we've always been here in America. They sailed before Columbus. It's a great book. <clears throat> but this is a Black Culture Diary. It says they would never teach who really did discover America in school. You guys have to uh, watch the rest of this. It is very important. Africans. But discrimination in the past led to fabrication in the record. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about. The black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. We encourage you to join our community in supporting and building a strong black history education medium. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.